Hey there, today I am sharing nine travel safety tips. Whether you are traveling alone or with a tour company, whether you are going to Europe or any destination in America, these nine travel safety tips are going to help you. I will talk about RFID technology and travel safety apps and more. If you are a solo traveler, you are already helping yourself by watching this awesome Travel Tips by Laurie video. My name is Laurie. I want to say welcome to my channel and please leave a comment below and introduce yourself and while you're down there while you're thinking about it hit that subscribe button the traveling safety tip number one is to plan ahead before you travel be smart before you start enroll in the smart traveler enrollment program it is by the state department this is a free service to u.s citizens and nationals when you are traveling to a different location you can enroll in their free program this is going to enroll you with the nearest u.s consulate or embassy and you're going to receive important information from the embassy like if there is civil unrest at your travel destination or a natural disaster and especially the reason why i recommend it is for families emergencies they know where you are and how to contact you I also think before you go you should email a picture of your travel documents your passport to a family member or close friend and the reason why I say this there are lots of skeptics out there the reason why I say this tip is because if you are the one incapacitated and in a coma or something and you cannot get to your email yes email yourself the passport picture and all that stuff but also email a friend because if you are the one who's incapacitated the friend or family member can get to it quickly and act quickly we use a travel belt that goes inside like our pants i also have used this little buddy pouch the velcro is very thick and that's why we like it there are several pockets in there and your passport does fit in there this little pouch does have an opening for you to charge your cell phone if it's in there. I have a subscriber who uses a neck wallet instead of this belt type one that we use uh, around her neck. And if you have not seen my 33 travel hacks or my 23 travel hacks videos, there are two of them, check out the 33 one because there is a great uh, travel hack or travel tip to using a carabiner hook to help with pickpocketers like if you were in Barcelona. I recently bought an RFID blocking travel on crossbody bag. It's nothing pretty but I can get a lot of stuff in there as well as slip a belt in the back of here if I want to just have a fanny pack or a belt. What's the new term for it? Belt bag? And of course there are the RFID pouches and sleeves. If you don't want a whole belt, if you don't want a whole wallet holder and it doesn't need to hold everything, then there are just little sleeves and pouches that you can get. Now, I used to think that if your credit card had a chip, that that meant that it was RFID capable. But according to an article I read by Loss Prevention Media, they said that there are only 1% of the cards out there that are actually RFID capable. Like we're that someone can really steal your identity off of your cards. So find out if your actual card is really capable of having its identity stolen through one of those RFID machines. And an RFID machine is a technology that uses radio frequencies to steal your identity off of those cards. The chip that is implanted in your card is an actual theft prevention extra secure measure. It has nothing to do with whether or not it's RFID capable and that's what I thought the chip was there for. But if it is RFID capable that means if you are able to wave your credit card or whatever card you're using above a terminal and payment actually go through that means that that card is RFID capable of the identity being stolen. And in an article by afar.com, I will list both of these below, by the way, in the description box. 
Their article says that even your passport picture and all its contents can be um, stolen. But here's the good news. It's almost impossible to do that. With the RFID machine to steal your passport's identity and picture, it has to be within six inches. I mean, that's that much, okay? Six inches from your actual passport booklet and the booklet has to be open. If your booklet is closed, that's when it becomes almost impossible to steal anything from it because in the cover of your passport booklet, there is a really secure tape that is in there that makes it pretty much impossible, like I said. Travel safety tip number two is to travel in numbers. There is safety in numbers. I recommend searching the area that you're going to and searching tour group companies. There is um, albatross.com and there's also guardian.com. Oh, and you can even search foodie meetups like this one in Barcelona before you go to a certain city, especially if you are a solo traveler. I know Albatross has specific tours that are geared, to geared towards single people or solo travelers and that way you would be in a group but then you would sleep and would have some alone time as well but you're traveling with a guide and with a group a small group you also want to walk down streets where there are people i know in venice we got lost my husband and i got lost and it was pretty shady in some of those little bitty back alley streets that lead to houses it's amazing but um just be smart about traveling where there are crowds or groups of people travel safety tip number three is to write down those numbers for instance if you have your credit card stolen how are you going to cancel it you don't have the phone number to the credit card company. Yes, you can keep your credit card account number, but they can find that over the phone for you. So write down in the like contact section of your phone, like make your credit card company have an actual contact number where you could hit the phone app and actually make a call to them. You can also keep the number in the notes section of your phone. Let me know in the comment section below if you think it would be smart to keep your phone away from your wallet. Travel safety tip number four is to be observant. Look up, notice sounds, notice quick moves, notice followers who are around you. Barcelona is the number one city for pickpocketing and our good friend Roxanne was victim of this. They were on Las Ramblas Street. Her husband husband was smoking a cigar and two people came up to him while he was smoking his cigar to ask for a light and she thinks that they were casing them like looking under the table looking where their bag was was it attached to anything and sadly she knew this but she did not attach her bag to like the leg of the chair even though it can be cut away it's one more thing to deter them just a little bit and then a man sat like two tables from their table and started carrying on a conversation with them, really engaging, fun conversation. And she thinks that that is when somebody came over and just pulled it out right from under her chair. Be sure to look at my Travel Hacks video for that carabiner hook um, way to attach your purse to a chair. The good news is, is that they both had their credit cards in their own or on their own person. So she was able to use his credit card phone number on the back of the card to call their actual company and cancel service. Report theft. That's what you call it. <laughs> Traveling safety tip number five is to go on food tours. It's a great way to stay in a group and you get below the surface, behind the crowd, behind the touristy section, areas of the city to visit. You really get to know the local history, the customs of that area. In other countries, food tours give you a lot of food, just so you know. And another tip about going on a food tour is remember to take cash for the tip because that is not included and they make their money from tips and you will fall in love with their personality honestly they're so fun I forgot to take cash on our food tour in Maine and I was so embarrassed because they're such a small group they know that you're not tipping them I was so embarrassed but I hunted him down and mailed via the US Post Office my tip to that awesome guy in Portland Maine traveling safety tip number six is to ask the desk clerk for a non-touristy place to visit or a great place to eat. 
let me know if you think that's a good idea especially if you're traveling alone like would they know then that you're traveling alone I don't know but I do think it would be helpful and also to search YouTube for things to do in that city tours to take I have made several videos about places around the world and reviewing that location for what to do YouTube is the number two search engine after Google so don't negate um, the power of YouTube travel safety tip number seven is to use travel safety apps in an article by Too Many Adapters, they recommend using a free app called Trip Whistle SOS. And what that's gonna do is it is going to give you all the emergency numbers for police, fire, ambulance that you may need in the different countries. And out of 196 countries, there are 70 different emergency numbers. And with the free app, you will be able to contact them with the swipe of a button. But do you really swipe a button or do you swipe an app? Hmm. Speaking of TSA, I do not think it is uh, preventive to put a lock or a combination lock on your actual suitcase before you put it in the airport or baggage claim. It, if TSA needs to get into it, they're gonna cut it and it might ruin your zipper or your suitcase. If you need to find out if pre-check is worth it or how to sign up for TSA pre-check, I have a video that I'll link here and the other videos um, in the description box below. I also have what not to bring on the airplane and it is a, from a list from TSA.gov. They are shut down right now, so you can easily contact them by using their phone number. It's a 1-800 number, call them. I've done it three times since the government shut down in 2019 and they have answered my problem. They also redirected me to the State Department STEP program that I mentioned in step one. So use their services. Travel safety tip number nine is to listen to podcasts about travel. I listened to Women Who Travel. It's by Condé Nast, I believe. And it was okay to start with, but if you have something specific, that is an avenue to search. You can buy all the RFID blocking things. You can search YouTube, you can plan ahead, but it is peace of mind. You are already helping your peace of mind by researching and planning before you go. So be smart before you start. And thank you again for visiting my Travel Tips by Laura YouTube channel.